Hi, I'm Henry Tenenbaum, and welcome to PM Magazine. We're spending all this week in England, and tonight we're on Berkeley Square, which during the 19th century was famous for the Nightingale, who sang their beautiful songs here. As you can uh, tell, times have changed just a little bit. This is a special evening for us tonight on PM Magazine. Later in the program, we're going to attend an audience with Pope John Paul II in Vatican City. We're going to get a unique glimpse of the man who is the spiritual leader for millions of Roman Catholics around the world. In our PM Magazine departments, Camilla Carr is going to show us London on the Cheap. In our leisure department, film critic Chuck Rich reviews The Elephant Man. And in the home department, Chef Tell makes pesto sauce, a favorite with pasta dishes. But first, let me ask you a question. What would it take for a car to be worth $120,000? Four tires, a steering wheel, headlights, headlight washers, headlight washers? That's right, I'm speaking of a Rolls Royce, the world's most prestigious car. And believe it or not, those cars are just about as common here in London as a Mercedes is in Washington, but they are considerably more expensive. They average about $120,000 back in the States. What is it like to drive one? How do they make them? We're gonna find out. We're going to take you to the Rolls Royce factory. Uh, factory is a bad term. It's more like an artist studio where skilled craftsmen spend a lifetime learning how to make the world's most prestigious car. To take you to that plant, we have to take a small train trip. Our destination is a town called Crewe, about two hours north of London. Crewe, England is notable for only one thing. It is the home of the factory that makes the Rolls Royce. And now that we're in Crewe, how do we get to the home of Rolls-Royce? You don't take a taxi to this factory. To get here, you are chauffeured in a Bentley. Thank you very much. <laughs> it strikes the fancy as odd that a rather innocuous looking town houses a rather drab looking factory that produces the ultimate automobile in the world. But they do. And this whole huge affair is presided over by these two gentlemen, Mr. Rolls and Mr. Royce. It was in 1904 that Henry Royce produced his first car. Unlike the other autos of his day, which were forever breaking down, the 1904 Royce motor car started easily, ran smoothly and quietly, and was completely reliable. It was in 1904 that this new dependable motor car caught the attention of Charles Stuart Rolls, an aristocrat, and at the time, the best racing driver in Britain. The men agreed to form a partnership. Royce was to manufacture the cars, and Rolls was to distribute them under their new name, Rolls Royce. And today, though the pound has sagged and the empire has faded, Rolls Royce is still the last word in automobiles. The reason is simple. The car is as perfect as humans can make it. Consider the current Rolls Royce engine, for example. Cylinder liners for it are honed to within five ten thousandths of an inch of perfect roundness. Crankshafts are machined to tolerances of one ten thousandth of an inch. And after the engines are manufactured, they are tested as only Rolls-Royce would do it. They're tested on the test beds for two and a half hours on natural gas. Before they ever get into the Before car. Before they ever go into the car, which is equal to 150 miles on the road. And what does all this precision in manufacturing and testing produce? A motor car that, as the British say, will not fail to proceed. And Rolls-Royce will spend more time working on the little things than some manufacturers will spend building an entire car. Take the radiator shell, for example. Eleven separate pieces of metal are joined together so perfectly that the radiator appears to be bent from a single piece of material. How long have you been making radiator grills? Oh, uh, 15 years. Well, aren't you a little tired of making radiator grills with no joints uh, showing? No, no, because I try and make the next one a little bit better than the last. 
How many people are capable of doing this kind of exact work? Uh, there's it, 12 of us. There's only 12. In the whole world? Yes. That can make a Rolls radiator grid? That's right, yes, exactly. Yes. And if you think Rolls invests a lot in their radiators, consider their dashboards. Only six men in the world are craftsmen enough to create these incredibly beautiful walnut veneer dashboards. And if an accident happens and your dashboard is dashed, not to worry, they keep a record and a sample of all past walnut veneers, just in case. One of the things that makes the car so expensive is the amount of brass on it. Everything from the door handles to the pivot bars on the sun visor. Eight cowhides of this size are used for every Rolls Royce. The animals are kept in areas with electrified fences, not barbed wire. No scratches that way, you know. Even the polished stainless steel Spirit of Ecstasy, the famous Rolls hood ornament, is created with an eye to perfection. Each one reproduced from an individual wax cast, using a method developed by the Chinese over 4,000 years ago. Now we'll get to the assembly line right after the lunch hour. And at the Rolls-Royce factory, it's easy to know when it's lunch hour. Just look for the runners. Why are they all running? This is a mystery to us even after all this long time. We don't understand why they're up like this. But of course, they always walk back. Bert Walton has been watching the workers run to lunch and walk back to the assembly line for 30 years at Rolls-Royce. He started with the company as a test driver. Now he steers visitors through the plant. I'm not sure if you can tell how quiet it is in here for an auto manufacturing plant. Now, why is that? Well, the reason for that is because it's not a constant moving line. Mm -hmm. And the rather relaxed attitude that carries on through the assembly is one of the reasons why it would strike you as being so quiet. Actually, calling this an assembly line would be wrong. Assembly lines are in Detroit, where bodies and engines and frames meet along a constantly moving conveyor system. At Rolls-Royce, the workers move amongst the cars. And when the cars must move, it's done like this. Each Rolls is tested and checked and tested again. Each car must undergo a bump test. No rattles loud, you know, that wouldn't be cricket. Just how meticulous are they here? Oh, meticulous to the degree where if they have a, a particular creek which is very difficult to locate, they would place a man in the boot area and travel on the road, driving the trunk the car, of the car. in the trunk of the car, driving the car on the road so that the man himself could pinpoint the noise in the boot area. They're so meticulous to pinpoint the noise. And finally, Rolls-Royce is so meticulous that every European model comes with this handy headlamp washer wiper. Just think what you could save in paper towels. And now you are no doubt wondering what it's like to drive a Rolls-Royce. You didn't think I'd give up the chance to find out, did you? Shall we go? Nice in here, isn't it? Quiet, comfortable, really luxurious. What does it take to drive a Rolls-Royce? Well, the average price of this car in Washington is $120,000. You have to put down a 25% deposit, so that comes to $90,000 to finance over five years. That means that your monthly payments are $2,200 a month. You have to earn $26,400 a year after taxes. That's not including clothing, rent, nothing, just to pay for this car. There's only one other way I know to get to drive a Rolls Royce. Uh, where to, sir? Uh, home, Henry, and uh, be quick about it. I need to be back in time for our PM magazine department.